The Greek island of Chios, located in the eastern Aegean Sea. Chios is known for one special product, which is mastika, or mastic in English. You may have heard of this product before. It's used in so many different kinds of things, and apparently it's very healthy for you and has a lot of benefits as well, besides just the good flavor. But this product comes from a tree which can only grow on this island. Not only can it only grow on this island, but it can only grow on one side of this island. So we'll go and check out the Mastica producing areas. But first we'll explore around here in the main town of Chios and the main port. The main town has about 30,000 people, and it is, of course, the administrative and cultural and educational center of this island. I mean, there really is not too much to the place here. It's got plenty of history because it has been inhabited for thousands of years. One cool thing that there is to see here is the castle. Take a walk around here, around the docks itself, and then go up to the castle. This castle doesn't really have a clear date of origin. From what I've read, some form of it has been here about as long as there have been people here, so thousands of years, but obviously there's been additions and modifications over the centuries. You have this little area here that you can walk around right outside of it. Since it's open and free, it's kind of cool to walk around. So the castle is up on the northwestern side of the port of Chios. It's along the old wall fortification, which is not, of course, as complete as it was back in the medieval times. I don't think that there's a place inside any of the parts of the castle here that you could go in, but you can kind of walk around the outside of it here and see kind of along the wall and the different parts of this old wall or what remains of the old wall. So we'll just head back to the place I'm staying at here in the main town of Chios today because we'll have an early start tomorrow morning to drive down to the Mastikohoria or Mastic Villages, the parts of the island where the product that famously comes from this island all comes from. We'll see the trees that produce the sap that this Mastika is made from and maybe even get to see how they make some of the many, many products that they use Mastika for. Good morning everyone from the airport of Chios. Not leaving yet, of course, but I had to come here to rent a car because we're going down to the Mastikohoria, of course, down in the south of the island. And the only way to really get around there is to have a car. Transportation, like on most islands, is pretty limited. Chios is no exception. Really hard to get around down in, in any of the village areas unless you have a car. So I rented a car for the day and it was cheaper to do it from the airport than anywhere else. έτσι μπροστά τάκ μόνο μπροστά αυτά τώρα του πας τραβηκτά το θεωρούμε πιο εύκολο να τραβάς παρά να σπρώχνεις ναι σε ορισμένες περιπτώσεις που είναι δύσκολα σε αυτά μπορεί να το χρησιμοποιήσω αυτό και μετά το κόβουμε το ξύνουμε επιφανειακά ναι ναι επιφανειακά να φύγει ο φιλιός χωρίς να φτάσει στο κόκαλο που λέμε, βαθιά στο... Α, ναι, γιατί άμα το κόψετε μέχρι το κόκαλο μετά θα χαλάσει. Ναι, να θρέψει. Αυτό θρέφει του χρόνου, δεν θα φαίνεται πια που ήταν η κενδιά. Ναι. Η κενδιά. Ερχόμαστε... 6-7 φορές τη σεζόν. Ποια είναι η σεζόν που... Η σεζόν είναι από τον Ιούλιο, τις 10 Ιουλίου, 
μέχρι τέλο του Σεπτέμβρη. Δηλαδή τι ζεστέ εποχέ βγάζει πιο πολύ. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Τι ζεστέ κυκλοφορούν οι χυμοί. Αυτό το δέντρο δουλεύει με του χυμού. Του χυμού του φαίνεται. Ναι. Ξεκινάμε από κάτω και ανεβαίνουμε πάνω σταδιακά μέχρι να φτάσουμε. Εκεί που φτάνουμε, στο μη πέρα. Όσο, πέρα, ναι, όσο πέρα, γίνεται. Ναι. Hey, τι βλέπω δεν είναι και πάρα πολύ ψηλά αυτά τα δέντρα, δεν έχουν πάρα πολύ αυτά μεγάλο είναι ύψος. Θάμνη. Το φυσιολογικό του ήταν να είναι θάμνο. Θάμνη. Αλλά από μικρά τα κλαδεύουμε, τα κλαδεύουμε και ναι. τα κάνουμε δέντρα. Α. Είναι θάμνο ο σκήνο. Αντέχει την ανομβρία, δηλαδή δεν θέλει πάρα πολύ βροχή. Όχι. Γιατί φαντάζομαι άμα είναι το αντίθετο και βρέξει παραπάνω ναι, από ό,τι κανονικά δεν δε θα είναι καλό. Δεν κατάστρεψε, ναι, ναι. Δε Γιατί το μαστίχι διαλύεται με το νερό και χαλάει ναι. τη μαστίχα. Ναι, άρα χρειάζεται ακριβώ όπω είναι το κλίμα εδώ που έχει. Ναι, ναι, είναι... Δεν βρέχει πάρα πολύ, αλλά δεν είναι και έρημο, είναι, είναι ό,τι πρέπει. Κλίμα. Είναι αυτό το κλίμα ναι. εδώ, γιατί βγαίνει μόνο στην Νότια Αχία. Μόνο στην Νότια. Αλλά δεν... φαντάζομαι μετράει όχι μόνο το κλίμα, αλλά και το χώμα εδώ. Και το χώμα. Και το χώμα. Αλλά πιο πολύ το κλίμα. Ναι. Άμα βρέξει, τελείωσε. Αυτού του μήνε από Ιούνιο ναι. μέχρι. Οκτώβριο δεν πρέπει να βρέξει. Ναι, πέφτει κάτω. κάτω. Βλέπετε κάτω, Την... κάτω εδώ τώρα, έτσι. Ναι, και μετά το μαζεύετε και... Θα το σκουπίσουμε. Mm. Με σκούπα. Με σκούπα. Με σκούπα θα μαζευτεί, θα κοσκινιστεί έτσι ναι. πρόχειρα εδώ. Και θα φύγει από εδώ. Θα πάει στο χωριό. Α. Θα ξανακοσκινιστεί. Mm. Θα φύγουν τα φύλλα, θα μπει σε φυσιτήρα να φύγουν τα φύλλα, να φύγουν όλα. Ναι, ναι. Θα μείνει τη μαστίγα, η οποία θα πληθεί, θα μπει σε νερό. Ναι, ναι. Θα πληθεί, θα φύγουν πάλι από εκεί με το χώμα, με το μέθοδο τη καθίζηση. Ναι. Θα μείνουν κάτω τα, μένουν κάτω τα ξύλα. Αλλάζει την πυκνότητα του νερού και μένουν κάτω τα ξύλα και έρχεται το μαστίγι απάνω. Mm. Το μαζεύει. Ναι. Και μετά πάει σε. Διαλογία, χρωματοδιαλογία που διαλέγει τα σκουπιδάκια. Πόσα χρόνια μπορεί να παράγει ένα, ένα δέντρο, Μετά από 10 χρόνια mm. είναι έτοιμο να σου δώσει. Είναι πιο κορμό, γίνει τόσο mm. περίπου σαν το μπουκάλι. Mm. Και είναι έτοιμο να σου δώσει καρπό και χυμό. Ναι. Χυμό. Αυτά εδώ πίσω είναι μικρά. Είναι αυτά εδώ. Α, είναι, είναι, είναι νέα. Ναι. Θα κάνω μερικά χρόνια να. Ναι, ναι. Και πόσα χρόνια κάνει ένα, ένα νέο φυτευμένο δέντρο να μπορεί να παράγει. Δέκα, δέκα. Δέκα. Θα είναι, mm. να είναι και 60 χρονά. Α, δηλαδή εντάξει, mm. παράγουν τόσα χρόνια. Εκεί απάνω θα πάνε να δεις, έχει κάτι, είναι πάνω από 300 χρόνια. Και ευχαριστώ καλά, πάρα πολύ που... Καλά να ε... περάσετε, ε... καλά να πάει το κανάλι. <laughs> ευχαριστώ πολύ. Well, that was really great to get to talk to a grower here of the Masticha trees. And he told me before I move on to come up here to the upper part of the field here because there are some wild Masticha trees that he says are at least 400 years old. So, you know, and I was curious about how long these trees typically live, what the lifespan is of these trees. I guess it's hundreds and hundreds of years. You can actually see here where some of the sap has fallen. See, there's some right here. Here we go. See? See? Ah, this one's still a little... <laughs> yeah, see? The dust here, see, it's very white. I guess if it's fresh, it's still a little gooey, but then it gets hard. And then here's like a little, don't know if you can see, there it is. Here's a, a bigger piece here. See, here we go. Masticha. There it is, masticha. The raw product right here. So you could see, uh, see some of it's a little, some of it's a little gooey on my fingers here. You can see where it just drops off on here, sort of like uh, like tears falling off of the tree. See, it does taste like the sort of raw mastic rocks. It's completely clean, so you know nothing wrong with um, you know with eating some of it if you want. If you are close to a tree that's producing sap and uh, you're sort of downwind of it and standing close to it, you actually can kind of smell it a little bit. Let's head back up the road a little bit and check out the Masticha Museum and then check out some of the villages in the area here.
the Mastija Museum is pretty interesting and very educational if you want to learn everything that there is to learn about Mastija while you're here. There's also this outdoor area of the museum as well where you get to walk around and see the Mastija trees. You don't have to come here to the museum to see Mastija trees. You could just keep driving south of here like I did and just, you know, kind of see them on the side of the road, maybe even see people tending to them. But if you don't want to do that and you're here at the museum and want to take care of that while you're here, you could do that here too. And back behind me over there is the village of Pirgi, a very iconic village in this area. And it's where we are going to go to next. Just wanted some water, huh? Let's kind of walk around and check out this really cool looking town. is also known as the Painted Village because most of the buildings and houses here have these sort of patterns along the facade, along the front of them, on the sides, uh, which is very unique to this area. I mean, obviously, like, I've never been anywhere else like this that had these kind of patterns. Apparently, it's because it was like this since antiquity, so it's like a tradition, like an architectural tradition. From far away, it may look like the buildings are built with bricks that are in these different shapes, but actually, if you look up close, you can see that it's just carved into the outside, and not even carved that deeply. If you put your finger here to feel it, it's just, you know, slightly inside, really more to make a color contrast. It's not really deep. So they just carve it all in these different shapes and patterns and maybe on some buildings like I guess the year <laughs> that it was carved. Uh, I would imagine after you know maybe a couple of decades or even centuries, I don't know, however long this lasts, it would have to be recarved and redone, you know, due to just natural erosion. But yeah, you can see um, you know all these different patterns and this even on the bottom of the balconies they have the patterns there so it really is just like the whole outside everything that's not a door or a window itself basically and i mean okay maybe like except for the very bottom of the buildings and some buildings don't have it but most do like here this is just like one random back alley here um you know some of these are also not lived in and they're abandoned but um you know most of the buildings have it even this one i guess maybe this house hasn't been abandoned for too long but uh even it has the patterns on the outside here. The best way to see Pirgi really is just to walk around here and admire the very unique looking buildings. If you're here by the middle of the afternoon and you start to get hungry, there's a couple of places to eat, but I actually found a place outside of Pirgi that looks like a more traditional taverna. So I'm gonna head out there now to go have some lunch. Taverna Artemis was the place that I wanted to eat at, that I researched out, had a lot of good reviews and good things, but something has happened, they're telling me, and it's closed for the next 15 days, which is unfortunate because uh, it seemed like a really nice place with traditional food. So now in Mesta, which is another one of the Mastijojoria, and this one is very different than Pirgi because here the style is medieval. You can call it a medieval village. I was gonna come here anyway after lunch, but due to the fact that the place I wanted to go to was suddenly closed, I'll just come and have lunch here.
not bad for lunch. It wasn't something unique to hear. It was kokora krasato, which is rooster with uh, in this sort of like a wine sauce with fries and a typical tomato and cucumber salad. Now here in this village, it has a, that sort of medieval style, that sort of Genoese style because of the history of this village having been this, well, not just this village, but this area was uh, under the control of the Genoese at some point. So you'll notice that in the medieval style of the buildings here in this village. Looks very different than Pirgi, which is more of an ancient type of style. It looks way different. One more place before heading back to the main town. One last little stop here for the day in the village of Kalimasia, which is not too far from the main town of Hios. It's about maybe 15 kilometers south of the main town of Hios, kind of in the beginning of the Mastijojoria area in the south of the island. I figured I'd stop and have a coffee, and I was hoping that I would find the Mastija flavored coffee because um, now there's so many different products to make with Mastija that, um, you know, it basically can be a flavor in just about anything, including coffee. And so there's like a Greek coffee, like the, okay, you have the traditional Greek coffee but it's got mastika flavor in it. They didn't have it at this cafe though and I was told it's because people don't really ask for it. So I guess it makes sense because for people here mastika is not really a big deal. It's just okay yeah it comes from here and you know that's sort of the area thrives on it but they're not going to go out of their way to consume products that um, you know are with mastika. Still gonna have my coffee though and you know have a nice little double Greek coffee here and then go to the shop and then basically call it a day after that. The really nice ladies here at the Meriliton Cafe in Kalimasia told me that there isn't really a special mastica shop here, so I guess the other source of information that told me that uh, was not exactly correct. They said that there are mastica products in the supermarket. Now you don't have to come here to Hios, you don't even have to come to Greece to get mastica products because there's mastica shops in many different cities and countries around the world. It's something that is a pretty well-known export. Back at the airport where I started the day, but not leaving yet because there's another side of Hios to see tomorrow. Another day here on the island of Hios, and since I had one more day left to tour around here, I figured I would go and see the north side of Hios as well. My budget didn't exactly account for two days of a rental car, just the one to go down to the Mastijojoria, I decided to take a chance on taking a bus. Clearly getting around by car, as is the case on most islands, is the best way. But, you know, if you really need to push it with the buses, there is a, a local bus system here. I found one bus that goes up to the main village of the northwestern villages of Hios, a village called Volisos. There's only one bus that goes up there from the main town of Hios and one bus that comes back and I think it doesn't even run every day but today the day I'm filming this it's running the bus here that goes up is five euros each way all right so made it to the village of Volisos. The minibus driver let me off just outside of the town here. He was gonna take me into the town, but there's a fish delivery <laughs> that uh, the person he's supposed to deliver it to, who is supposed to meet him on the main road outside of the town, uh, is not shown up yet. And because I have literally just an hour before I have to get the bus back, the only bus that goes back to the main town of Hios, I have to maximize my time. So I was like, all right, well, let me just walk up. It's only like 200 meters up to the town from the main road anyway. Yes, the mini buses that go around here, the local buses, can also be used to deliver things as well. Let's see what we can see in Volisos for an hour.
I'm assuming one of the reasons why you see quite a few abandoned houses and buildings here is because the population of this town, as well as the villages in the wider area here on the north side of Hios, is less than it once was. Because there was more emigration out of this side of Hios than on the southern side of Hios, because the southern side of Hios is where the Mastic villages are, so naturally due to that they have traditionally been more prosperous, so less of a push factor to you know, for people to leave and seek better fortunes elsewhere. But, of course, now that things are a little bit different, I mean, between both people who've stayed, people who've left and sent money back or even returned after moving abroad, you know, you do see the places that are being lived in here look quite nice. I love how there's still a roll of toilet paper there. <laughs> I wonder how many years it's been there like that. If you see any of these open though, I wouldn't advise going all the way in because, you know, you never know kind of structurally how things are, how the whatever's left of the roof above might be. <laughs> so, um, but you know, kind of interesting to take a peek inside. This particular house here has a nice little front patio area that has a, a view of the castle. Now that castle up there, you can go to it and if I had more time I would because I'm sure it looks quite cool from up there and there's probably a pretty epic view, but I don't exactly have the time. I don't want to risk going up there and then not having enough time to come all the way back and make the one and only bus that goes back to Hios. Little old bus stop here. At least you get some shade. Ah, and then here's the schedule. Although I think that this is a little different now because, oh no, no, it's actually, it's right. Cause 1230 was when we left Kios to come here and then 5 PM, I mean, I'm sorry, 3 PM is, uh, you know, what it is now to head back. So, all right, now we wait here. Oh there, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not back in Hios now. The bus driver actually, a uh, really fun guy, I don't know if he wants to be on my YouTube video yet because we've got caught up in conversation, but uh, he said he has to go and to this other mountain village that's off the way to pick up some other people. And so since he's got to pass by here again, he said, all right, well, why don't I drop you off here for 10 minutes and you can go and walk around another village to see another village for your video. This town is called Avgonima. Avgonima. So let's uh, take a little walk around Avgonima. I'm not expecting much. I think it's going to be just another quiet little village up here in the north. As you can see, we have the, you know, very typical stone structured houses, which are typical of the region. Kalosilfate sta Avgonima. Welcome to Avgonima village. So let's see. Yeah, see, so you have to leave your cars outside of the village because it's very tight up in here. This actually, this village looks even more iconic in some ways than the one we were at before because it's smaller and it's just got the stone structures here like this. It's pretty quiet here. There's not much going on. There's a little central square here where, okay, you know, there's some restaurants and cafes open, a couple of people around, but otherwise it's pretty quiet here. Now here I don't see a whole bunch of abandoned houses like I did in the other village. Whatever is here looks like it's lived in and kept up for the most part. I mean, you, you know, you do see some sort of empty patches like this, you know, like remnants of former houses. But for the most part, the houses here all look like they're lived in. We should head back down to the road because we only have a few minutes here and the one and only bus of the day is gonna pass by. So I better not miss it because otherwise I will have to hike over the mountain about 30 kilometers to get back to Hios. So I don't really feel like going on that much of a hike. Taxi! Taxi, hola cala! Hola cala! <laughs> Thank you.
now back in the main town of Hios and I am going to head back to my accommodations here and basically call it a trip because tomorrow I will be leaving this island and going on to the next place but you'll have to stay tuned and subscribe in order to see that next place so take care and travel better <laughs>